and uh, delighted you're all here to join us today. Thank you very, very much. Now, it's my pleasure today to introduce our very distinguished luncheon speaker. Bob Deckert is a member of parliament from Ontario. He served in Canada's parliament uh, since 2008. Uh, at that time, he was uh, honored by Prime Minister Harper to be appointed as the uh, Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Justice and the Attorney General of Canada. And uh, when he was re-elected in 2011, again the Prime Minister honored him and made him the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Uh, Bob is a fellow lawyer but he's a really nice guy. <laughs> he's a, uh, a former senior partner in the national law firm of Gowlings, which is definitely the second best law firm in all of Canada. <laughs> <laughs> and coming from his uh, riding of Mississauga, he is no stranger to... Again, uh, please join me in welcoming our very esteemed guest, Bob Deckard. Well, well, thank you, Commissioner Knott, for, for those very kind uh, and overly generous words. And uh, since I'm no longer a member of that law firm, I won't even dispute uh, that comment. Um, uh, Commissioner, uh, Consul General uh, Norton, uh, commissioners from the IJC, uh, distinguished guests and uh, friends, um, I have to tell you at the outset that I'm very uh, humbled uh, to be here speaking before this audience. In fact, I'm, I'm quite intimidated, to, to be honest. Uh, there are room, this is a room full of scientists, uh, environmental experts, and I'm not, not, none of those, as uh, Commissioner Nod has pointed out. Um, and so I, I, I feel inadequate in that regard, because I know that you have all uh, been working in this field for many years and dedicated your lives to the quality of the Great Lakes. But what we do have in common is that the, uh, the constituency or the district that I represent in Mississauga and the west side of Toronto draws all of its drinking water uh, from Lake Ontario. So I and my family and my constituents uh, depend very uh, significantly on the quality of the Great Lakes water. Uh, we, uh, we recreate in it and we understand how important it is to the quality of our lives and to our prosperity and the uh, prosperity and quality of lives of future generations. So thank you for inviting me to be here today to address you at this International Joint Commission Great Lakes Biannual Meeting. On behalf of the Government of Canada, I would like to acknowledge and thank the organizers of the Great Lakes Week, the International Joint Commission, the Great Lakes Commission, and the Healing Our Waters Coalition, who were responsible as well for that uh, lovely reception that we had last evening. As you know, this meeting brings together a critical mass of people who are greatly committed to the protection of the Great Lakes Basin. And I want to emphasize that the Government of Canada is equally committed to protecting water quality in the Great Lakes. I would like to say a few words today about the importance of Canada's relationship with the United States, which is so closely linked to the quality of water in the Great Lakes. As you know, we share history, we share values, we are friends and neighbours, we are family and we are allies. Our relationship is positive and wide-ranging, characterized by unparalleled cooperation in a variety of areas touching our economics and our shared environment. Our two countries share the greatest bilateral trading relationship in the world. In 2010, our bilateral trade was close to $645 billion, with more than $1.7 billion worth of goods and services crossing the Canada-US border every single day. Here in Michigan, more than 237,000 jobs in the state depend on Canada-US trade. As well, Michigan sells more goods to Canada than to any other country in the world. Therefore, we both benefit tremendously from this strong trading relationship. And speaking of trade, it is worth pointing out that a great deal of Canada-US trade happens here locally in the Detroit and Windsor corridor. And this brings me to the importance of the Great Lakes region to both our countries. The Great Lakes region comprises the industrial heartlands of both Canada and the US, and as such is an economic engine for both of our countries. The region is also home to a number of great cities that were built and have prospered on the shores of these Great Lakes, such as Chicago, Toronto, and Detroit, to name only a few. And I believe the Great Lakes themselves have been responsible for the region's growth and development. In that respect, I recently learned that each year, the Great Lakes states contribute $180 billion to Canada-US trade, 
and that is, by all accounts, a very substantial sum. These vast expanses of water have, in effect, provided our country's industry with cheap, energy-efficient, and readily available transportation networks. This has been especially true since the opening of the St. Lawrence Seaway in 1959. The Great Lakes Seaway system has allowed our country's businesses to export their products to each other and to the world over, bringing prosperity to both of our nations. But the waters of the Great Lakes have also drawn people through the appeal of their beauty and as a source of recreation. As one of millions of recreational boaters in both Canada and the US, I can personally attest to the leisure value of the Great Lakes. I was mentioning earlier His Worship, the Mayor of uh, St. Catharines, Ontario, is here today, and uh, the beaches in his community are a great attraction uh, to the Ontario region. My wife and I take our boat there several times a summer to uh, partake in uh, those beautiful beaches, and I know that uh, the city of St. Catharines and all the cities on uh, <clears throat> Lake Ontario and all the Great Lakes work very hard uh, to maintain the quality of the beaches. That's very important to all the people who live in this region. It's part of our psychology. We expect that water to be clean. We expect to be able to recreate in it. We expect to be able to use it to, uh, to uh, uh, cook and, and clean and drink. And uh, we expect it to be there in that same state for future generations. As one of the millions of uh, residents of this area, uh, it, is, it is clear to me that the Great Lakes are environmental treasures that we must preserve and an economic region that we must enhance for the continued prosperity of our two countries. And we are taking clear measures to promote a healthy environment by modernizing the Great Lakes Water Equality Agreement with the U.S. The Government of Canada has also taken steps to promote a healthy economy, especially here in the Great Lakes region, through a financial contribution to the new international trade crossing. As many of you may know, in June 2009, Canada's then Minister of Foreign Affairs, the Honourable Lawrence Cannon, and Secretary of State Hillary Clinton announced that our two governments would negotiate amendments to the Great Lakes Water Quality Agreement. The agreement's purpose is to restore and maintain the chemical, physical, and biological integrity of the waters of the Great Lakes Basin ecosystem. The current agreement represents a commitment between the Government of Canada and the U.S. government to implement programs that manage nutrients and toxic chemicals affecting the Great Lakes Basin ecosystem. Originally adopted in 1972, the agreement was amended a number of times, most recently in 1987. Both countries recognized the need to review the current state of the agreement and in January 2004 launched a binational public review process. In 2005, the International Joint Commission, at the request of both governments, undertook public meetings across the Great Lakes Basin and launched an innovative web dialogue to seek public input into the agreement's review. This process engaged more than 4,100 people and led to a synthesis report that was considered by both governments and the Great Lakes community during the review. I would like to highlight the important role of the International Joint Commission in this regard. The Commission is admired not only for its scientific and technical know-how, but also for its capacity to engage the public, which of course is so very important to getting the residents of both countries to participate in the improvement of the quality of water in our, in our Great Lakes Basin. Throughout 2006 and 2007, more than 350 Canadians and Americans participated directly in the review process. The combination of time, effort and resources dedicated to public engagement contributed to the decision by our two governments to amend this agreement. The main reason to amend the agreement is to modernize it and we believe this is a critical step towards successfully addressing current and emerging issues that are affecting the water quality of the Great Lakes. For instance, some provisions in the current agreement are outdated and do not address emerging threats. The negotiation process has been organized around a series of four plenary sessions. The third plenary session occurred this past June in Chicago, and I understand a, a, the, the next uh, plenary session and the fourth uh, and final plenary session is uh, tentatively set for this December. Most recently, in September of this year, the two governments held two public forums, one in each country, as well as a webinar. These public forums were an opportunity for interested members of the public and civil society to learn about and express their opinions on the proposed changes to the agreement. The negotiation process is proceeding well. Although international negotiations can be complex, we anticipate a fourth and final plenary later this year, as I mentioned. Our government has taken the right decision to amend the Great Lakes Water Quality Agreement and it has sought out and benefited from the insightful public participation throughout this process, including the, the, the people at this conference here this week. Let me now turn to the economy, more specifically to the new international trade crossing. The NITC is a Canada-US private sector proposal 
to build a new bridge over the J Detroit River. This project will facilitate trade between our two countries. The existing border crossings between Detroit and Windsor are the busiest crossings between the United States and Canada. They are so busy that measured by value, the Windsor-Detroit crossings handle approximately 28% of all Canada-US trade. This trade supports thousands of jobs in both the United States and Canada, and that's why, in our view, constructing the NITC is Canada's most important infrastructure project. Experts estimate that over the next 30 years, cross-border trade and traffic in the Windsor-Detroit corridor will triple for truck traffic and more than double for vehicle traffic. The existing Ambassador Bridge does not have the capacity to meet this demand. Moreover, there is no highway to highway connection to the Ambassador Bridge, and as a result, trucks must stop at least 17 times in Windsor before reaching the bridge. This is not only inefficient for trade, but harms the environment. Because our two countries' trading relationship is vital to both nations, we believe it is in the public interest to construct a new Detroit River crossing that will be, the subject, will be subject to appropriate public oversight. The NITC is the only proposal that has received the necessary environmental permits to begin construction. And the importance of this project to the US and Canadian economies is why Canada has committed to increasing its financial contribution to the project by up to US $550 million. In partnership with the state of Michigan and the US government, Canada is committed to supporting economic growth in this region. Building the NITC will directly strengthen the trading relationship between the United States and Canada and lead to greater prosperity in both countries. Another measure our government is taking to promote a healthy economy is to further expand the trading relationship between our two nations by going beyond the border. Since 9-11, both Canada and the United States have invested heavily in border security. We are currently working together on managing a border built around 21st century infrastructure and border policies. Did you know that since September 2001, Canada has invested more than $10 billion in border security and emergency preparedness? I think this shows that the, clearly that the government of Canada has made effective border management a key priority and working closely with the United States to address the economic and security challenges and opportunities of the future. It is in the interest of both of our countries to have a border that promotes economic competitiveness and jobs and enhances security through the efficient movement of people and goods. Millions of jobs in both countries rely on efficient bilateral trade, which is even more important during this continued period of economic uncertainty. So in conclusion, you can see the Government of Canada, in partnership with the U.S., is hard at work to ensure a healthy environment and a healthy economy. We are negotiating amendments to modernize the Great Lakes Water Quality Agreement to better protect water quality for future generations, and we are active partners in the new international trade crossing. The Prime Minister and President have presented a shared vision for perimeter security and economic competitiveness between our two countries. And these initiatives will ensure that trade between our two countries continue to grow and thus bring increased prosperity to the citizens of both countries. It is clear that we are a government in action and we take these issues seriously. And I want to thank you all for your attention and for your commitment to the prosperity of the Great Lakes region and the quality of water in the Great Lakes. Thank you very much. And thank you, Bob. Um, thank you for your uh, uh, very kind words. Uh, we very much appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to join us today. Uh, you honor us with your presence. And we'd like to recognize the, uh, the job that you and your colleagues are doing on the north side of the border um, for all those issues that you raised in your remarks. And uh, thank you again for that. Um, now we move to the next room, which is uh, over here to my left. I guess that would be somebody's right, somebody's left. And uh, everyone in this room has a reserved seat, and I gather they are at the front. And uh, as you go out, I gather there'll be some leaflets. Uh, by all means, take one. They'll be identifying some of the priority issues for this afternoon. Thank you very much, and thank you.